Welcome. Welcome to Living Mosaic, a project of the Spark of Humanity Network. My name is Martha Holden, and I'm a member of the Spark of Humanity Network. We're here courtesy of Orca Media, our local public access TV station, and with the support of the Spark of Humanity Network. We like friends on Facebook. You can follow us on Facebook if you're so inclined. And you can find the old sh shots on YouTube through going through the orcamedia.net website or the Spark of Humanity dot Spark of Humanity net website, I think, if you want to. Thank you for joining us. This afternoon we are talking about time. Time that, at times, it seems we feel there's never enough of. Or why is time doing this to me? Or a whole bunch of, because time is a, maybe it's a dimension. It's certainly a mystery. It's perhaps a creative medium or a medium with which we can interact and create maybe or maybe not, but at least we could get in harmony with it. It's not, it's not easy to talk about, so I'll wave my hands a lot, be reassured. Um, I, first, I first became aware of the malleability, the gooeyness, as it were, of time when I happened to be on Maui for a few days. And I would leave the hotel room and head to wherever I was supposed to be, allowing the 10 minutes that I would leave in New England. And somehow the time would have stretched, it would have like exhaled. And like there was 20 minutes or more, no set time, but it just seemed like, oh, somehow things I'm doing at a very leisurely space, pace are taking half as long or seeming twice as easy. Just, this is very strange, I thought, but it's a good thing. And I was paid attention to that. That was many years ago. More recently, I was in what is now South Sudan, and my friend, my host, had called together a gathering of people in the village and said, the way we tell people when to be here is when the sun is there. Well, there's the horizon. The sun is there. When the sun is there, you know, that's when we'll all get together. Now, what a simple and elegant way of, you know, you don't have to look at your watch if you have one or your smartphone, which we didn't back then. Um, just, yeah, when the sun is there, that's when we get together and you can watch the sun. Oh, it's getting closer. Maybe I'd better pack away whatever I'm involved in and head over to the compound where we were meeting. So it's like different cultures, maybe different geological locations. Time seems different. It, it has a different quality to it. Time may be alive. The is it the astrophysicist? You probably all know this better than I do. Time is not linear. Our human experience of time tends to be linear. But they say all time is present right now. The eternal presence, present, as Eckhart Tolle says. It's all here right now. It's, we may experience it linearly, but that's not the true nature of time. So, you know, I don't know. Um, but it's helpful, I think, to think about these things. I th it seems to me that people feel, I've heard people feel tyrannized by time. But when we look at it more closely, it seems they're not really tyrannized by time. They're tyrannized by what we've done to time, by digitizing it. It's, you know. Time doesn't like to be digitized. It doesn't respond well to digitization. 
there are many people who won't listen to music that's been digitized. It's sort of like, so how do we develop a living relationship with this medium? How do we come into a relationship with it, respecting, respecting its integrity, what it has to offer us, respecting it perhaps as a component of this mosaic, this living mosaic, that of which we are all creatures maybe or members. The basic premise of this program being that there is a solution to the world distress and pain and that it may be perceived as a living mosaic, a living evolving mosaic, and that we each have a little place in it, we each have a niche, that we are each unique and essential to the completion of the mosaic. So how do we fit time into that? Is time maybe part of the substrate of the mosaic into which us little pebbles and pearls and pieces of broken mirror and broken glass are being drawn. I don't know, but it's something you're welcome to think about. And get in touch with us at by email through Facebook, maybe you can, um, but email is livingmosaic2024 at gmail.com. So if you have some ideas that you want to have share on this program and talk about without showing up via Zoom, that's the way to do it. I've had, there's a, another way the word time is used that I think doesn't really mean time. Um, I, had a, I had a friend who was doing life term in prison and I would suggest he do something. He'd say, I don't have time for that. Now, well, you know, you're, ah, uh, you know, I think probably, you know, for the rest, somewhere in the rest of your life, you, had, you know, there is time for that. But I didn't challenge him on that. Um, and actually, he's been paroled, so who knows what he's doing now. Another occasion I had was there was a young man with whom I sort of had a thing or hope to have a thing. And he said, I don't have time to get married. And I thought, well, if you wanted to, you would. So I got it, they didn't want to. And so that was the end of that idea in my furry little brain. But I realized that both those uses of time were not really about time. They're about, the Germans have a wonderful word, which is spelled like our word lust but it's pronounced lust or something close to that. And it's sort of like, I don't feel any oomph toward that. There's no oomph getting me toward that. And I think that the idea of oomph is useful when we're thinking about time in terms of, I don't feel like doing that, or I don't want to do it. There's no oomph. There's, because if we say I don't feel like it, in this culture, well, what's the matter with you? I don't feel like it. You know, people make fun of us. But the idea that there's nothing in me that moves in that direction. The Greeks had two words for time, I understand. One is kairos, and the other is chronos. And chronos is, watches were first known as chronometers, chronos meters, keeping track of time. The hand on the clock, chronos, keeping that measurable, I need to be at the train station in 37 minutes and 15 seconds sort of time. Kairos is the fullness of time, the movement of time. It's time as I'm about to sneeze, probably the goodies I brought here. Um, <coughs> see if you if you can see them, they've got a wonderful arrangement from the roadside. Um, Kairos is 
is, I think, in sacred scripture, you know, in the fullness of time, X happened, in the fullness of time, Y. And to think of time in that sense, where time has an integrity of its own, it has a life of its own, it has a vitality of its own. So my suspicion from having, like many of us, tried to push time around and put it in boxes um, for much of my life, my suspicion is that if I'm willing to you know, pay less attention to what my screen says, and there's something within me, something of me, something there, probably the little place, our spark of humanity, as we say in the spark of humanity presentations, that place that, that wants to tug me that wants to tug me into my rightful place, my rightful relationship within the mosaic, this living mosaic that we're all um, inherently part of and that we're all hopefully moving towards our optimal niche within a <clears throat> living and evolving niche. So we can't just settle and say, okay, I'm here now, thank you. I can go back to sleep. No. it's. Uh, being aware of that. So that there is the way that, that Kairos, that aspect of time, sort of is tugging us toward where we, toward where we are truly um, comfortable, where we feel like we're in fluid, constructive, creative relationship with all that is, we feel like we're in our niche in reality, in the life of this planet, and that the, the kairos, the sensitivity to that, will draw us toward our niche. So how do we develop sensitivity to kairos, toward that that dimension, that sort of time that moves and is moving and is part of what moves us towards having this living mosaic program with the help of the folks at ORCA and the other, the backbone of the Spark of Humanity Network. So how do we become more sensitive to that, more willing to start off with, willing to explore that, willing to explore our unique relationship with it and I can support you in doing that. I can tell you a little bit about what, about what I do um, and some ideas I have, but it's a, it's a personal journey for each one of us. We can support each other and sort of call out our experience to each other, but no, there's no ten easy steps to doing this because the Maybe the major point of this living mosaic concept and idea is for us to become so alive, so fully alive within ourselves and responsive to the dynamic of reality or all that is or you know whatever we want to call it, and that we're we're becoming we're joining ourselves into that life. We're becoming part, we are part of it, but we're recognizing that and willing to grow deeper into it because that's where we're truly comfortable. That's the only place we're truly comfortable. Otherwise, we're just in some form of denial. We can be comfortable enough for now. We can be comfortable enough age-adjusted and, you know, given the situation, but to be deeply comfortable it's when we're in, we're in that, that matrix, we're fully embedded in it. So to move from time chronos to time kairos, because kairos, I think, is alive, um, in a sense, the way I talk about the mosaic being alive, it, it has an integrity, an organic, an organic inten integrity of its own that 
through chronos, clock time, linear time, we may try to try to manage it so it suits our ideas about the way things are supposed to be. But to let go of that, to begin to let go of that, one possibility, I have a practice of every week for one day, 24 hours, I don't look at a screen. I don't have, I cover up my clocks. I don't, I have no idea what chronos time it is. And I let myself be flowed by Kairos time, just because I don't want to lose that capacity. I not only don't want to lose it, I want to support, strengthen, increase, grow a capacity to, I don't know whether the right word is inhabit, well, I want to inhabit my niche in the mosaic, so in that sense I want to inhabit Kairos, or I want Kairos to be inhabiting me. So to take some time, and you know, people do that on vacations. Um, some people, some vacations. But oh, oh it's, it's, it's noon, they're serving lunch now, we better get there. Or, you know, the baby's crying or whatever. But the, to begin to experiment with your own personal ways of, of resisting, blocking out, abandoning all the faces of Kronos, to allow yourself to become more deeply sensitive to Kairos so that it can get you where you want to be. Where, where it wants you to be, which is where you'll be comfortable. may not be what you think you want, but it is. I've had a couple of experiences recently, um, over the past several years. I mean, I get an idea. And it seems like a good idea. And I think it might work. So my nature is to find out. I've had many friends, women friends. I was sort of like, is this relationship going anywhere? Does he love me? Are we going? Are we on the marriage track? Maybe this is just my generation. Anyway, but that sort of like pushing the issue. I want to know now. I need to know now. Well, no, we don't need to know now. There's no need for us to know how. We will know when we need to know. And meanwhile, the way we figured out to be available so we will know when, we, when it's relevant for us to know is to live in the present right now, to not get carried away. I mean, Kronos isn't the whole problem. The major problem is up here because we get ideas about the way things are supposed to be or what we need in terms of closure, definitive answers. You know, we think we need that and no. We don't need any of that. What we need is to be, let go of all that stuff. A few weeks ago or months ago, we talked about willingness, just to be willing to let that all go. All that need to know. All that need to get everything organized in its little pigeonholes, staying there so I can get on with probably coming up with other ideas about how things should be. I'll think I'll relax, but I won't relax because my mind will keep on be going like this. So, so to just say, okay, this is an idea. It involves these other people. I don't need to talk to them about it now. I don't need to let them even know the idea. I can just sit with it and ask, be available, let go of my ideas about what needs to happen and be available to that oomph and think it through. Is this a good time for them? Well, no, actually not. He just broke his ankle and they probably don't want to be talking about a vacation in a few months. You know, maybe we need to wait till he gets home and then we can talk about it. 
Um, oh, okay, well, she, she says she's confused. Well, I don't need to try to straighten her out right now. I can wait until we have a chance to sit down and I'm present and we've been together for a while, so we're sort of in synchrony. I guess that's a word. And there's chronos in that word. You know, our chronological, we're moving and so we're closer towards kairos and we can talk about it then. It's a, yeah. it's a profound shift and obviously we can't do it all the time given this culture but it's a sensitivity I think that is probably essential for us being available to be drawn into our true place within the life of this evolving living mosaic so to just find out ways to explore ways discover ways that that open you up away from the screens, away from the chronology, and, and just time to just get an awareness of that sense of when it's time, you know, when it's time to leave, when it's time not to leave. And one of the things that strikes me is I am, I get it from my mother, tend to be late, tend to pack too much in, before and I need to leave at this time, but I think I'll do this and this and this first. Um, and so I'm on my way to the doctor's appointment. Classic. You know, I'm thinking up all the excuses. My brain is entirely going with the excuses why I'm late, and maybe making some up if they aren't true. The light, the pedestrians, the you know whatever. And I've. And how many times has this happened to you? You get to the appointment, and oh, I'm so sorry, you'll need to wait for 10 minutes. The doctor's a little behind. And so there was all that brain activity, all that adrenaline creative activity was a total, totally unneeded. And you could have been watching the snow fall or you know, admiring the leaves or, you know, thinking about how fortunate it was that you have a car that works or a bus that works. Um, so to just to get out of that head stuff, we get so attached to our mental process and to be aware of it and to realize, oh, let's try something new that will lead me to becoming my own unique essential bit of the solution. So I'll give it a try. Before we close down here, um, this is a project of the Spark of Humanity Network, which is based on the intuition that there is a spark of humanity in each one of us, and that as we claim our sparks by connecting with and affirming the spark in others, that strengthens their spark as it strengthens our spark. And a strengthened spark tends to erode the defenses, release the bafflement, and clar clarify the bafflement and release the distortions. So I'm so glad you could join us. And thanks to Orca Media and the backbone and the other 99% of the iceberg that supports this. Remember that. Um, you're welcome to get in touch with us through email. And you're, we like friends on Facebook, so go for it if you're inclined to that medium. And be well and just relax. Let's take the next 14, 13 seconds to just practice Kairos. <laughs>